Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Louise Hubar begins now. Hello everyone. The state government has once again defended its $26 million small business hardship grant scheme, reiterating it won't be releasing the details of who received the money. The minister responsible for the scheme has instead announced there will be further mental health support available for small businesses. These units provide a quiet escape just outside the city. But when the pandemic started and travel stopped, Hobart Hideaway pods were forced to temporarily close their doors. Back in March, um, I remember there was a one week period where we just had floods and floods and floods of cancellations coming in. Claire is one of the small business owners who missed out on the state government's $15,000 hardship grants. She subsequently received $4,000 from the scheme, but has never been told why she didn't initially qualify. Still actually don't understand how they decided who received the 15000 There was no explanation given. The minister responsible for the $26 million grant program is still refusing to release the list of successful recipients. The government's been very clear. Uh, the advice from the Secretary of State Growth has been that this would uh, cause more undue harm on a number of businesses. This arrogant government, this secretive government, is seeking uh, once again to hide information that is in the public interest. The Northern Midlands Business Association says they've surveyed their members on the issue. Certainly an overwhelming number have said that um, they don't want that information disclosed or they don't want to know that information. Let's not forget that these applicants have signed uh, paperwork in applying for these funds saying that they would be prepared for the, their, um, their details to be disclosed should they, they be successful. The government today announcing there will be further mental health support available for small businesses. There's a general sense that we're not really sure how the next 12 months is going to play out. So certainly the economic impact may not be felt until throughout the coming year. It's really important that this money goes to helping support those businesses that need it most. Meg Sides, 7 Tasmania News. And if you or someone you know needs support, contact Lifeline on 13 11 14. A 24-year-old man who crashed his motorbike while not wearing a helmet has escaped serious injury. Police were called to the single vehicle crash at Gagebrook last night at around 6 o'clock. The rider was taken to the Royal Hobart Hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Meanwhile, a man has sustained a non-life-threatening cut to his head following an alleged assault at Mornington on Friday night. Police responded to a disturbance just before midnight on Cambridge Road near the Mornington Inn and Discovery Park. A 26-year-old man has been charged with wounding and two counts of assault. Police say the parties are known to each other. Anyone with information is urged to contact Crime Stoppers. An experienced bushwalker has been injured after a boulder was dislodged from above while they were climbing a steep rocky area near the Pine Valley Hut region of the Overland Track. The Westpac rescue helicopter was dispatched at around 7 o'clock this morning after the group of walkers he was with activated a personal locator beacon. Tasmania Police has praised the group for being well prepared and having an emergency device. It's been a year of heartache and global chaos, but here's a heartwarming story for your Sunday night. Two Tasmanians living with disabilities have today defied the odds, tying the knot in Hobart in a very special ceremony. For the groom, the wedding was also a chance to reunite with long-lost brothers back together after more than five decades apart. This excited bride arriving in style, walking down the aisle towards her tearful groom. Both living with intellectual disabilities, David and Lorraine are finally saying, I do. It's absolutely incredible. You know, these people are so much in love. They, you, can, you can just feel the love. Tying the knot today in a small ceremony. The day made even more emotional with appearances from recently reunited brothers. After David had to prove they even existed, their names were eventually found written on their mother's gravestone. They, as well as two other siblings living outside of Tasmania, were all separated as children. It's been 53 years. And we knew that David was out there, but trying to find him was absolutely hard. Because I first met my brother about three weeks ago. And the first time I've ever seen him. It's beautiful. 
important there, so excited to be here for his wedding today, support him. Lucky timing for the brothers, with today's wedding initially set for March, but postponed due to COVID-19. A similar story for many during the past few months, with others having to be creative amid restrictions. Zoom has been an incredible um, product to have because that's enabled lots and lots of people to be able to to you know, zoom in and, and see the wedding. I know it's not the same. The family, however, thrilled to have been able to witness the union in person and farewell Mr and Mrs Burr. Bye. Bye. See you later. Bye. 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 Ruby Kamane, 7 Tasmania News. How beautiful. Congratulations, Mr and Mrs Burr. Uh, local boaties are being urged to prepare and take care when fishing for rock lobster with the season officially opening today. Marine and Safety Tasmania saying often boat owners store their safety gear in almost inaccessible places. While reminding the public to inspect life jackets, check the weather forecast and tell someone where they're going. A Tasmanian house has turned spooky and spectacular for Halloween with a large-scale lights display that attracted the masses. Max Jago's one-night-only show event featured pyrotechnics but comes with a bill that would give many a scare. <laughs> a real-life thriller starring this house. <laughs> Pyrotechnics and 12,000 lights, each with its very own microcomputer, all controlled and synced from Max Jago's bedroom. There is a computer that sits underneath this rack and that's what sends out all the information. The Newnham homeowner taking Halloween decorating to extreme lengths. I just absolutely love seeing all the kids and the families enjoying themselves. The street certainly no ghost town last night. Reports as many as 2,000 rushed to catch a glimpse with traffic spilling onto the highway. I was out, come home and do it all, didn't we, Max? <laughs> Fire engines and traffic control. and. But all this comes with a haunting price tag. Uh, I probably could have paid the house off. <laughs> uh, would be a good way to put it. Last night alone, he burned through $2,000 in ethanol. Max spent three and a half months of his weekend setting up the one night only spectacular. Now, the cleanup effort begins. Then, the next project. About three days to pull this one down and then uh, probably another month of setting up for Christmas. Garth Burley, 7 Tasmania News. A thief in New Norfolk has been caught red-handed on camera in a Halloween heist. Residents of a house on Back River Road captured the person tiptoeing through their front yard on CCTV in the early hours of yesterday morning. When they woke up, they discovered a handmade skeleton decoration had been stolen from their porch. The house had been decorated for children in the area to enjoy while trick-or-treating and locals say they're disappointed by the act of thievery. It's been a mixed day for Tasmania in the Sheffield Shield with perfect batting conditions proving both a blessing and a curse. Ben McDermott fell agonising short of three figures before the lower order shone with the bat but was a luckless day with the ball. After losing pain early, Ben McDermott had one eye on 100 but soon lost his head. And McDermott hits it in the air, it could be caught. Oh no, not again, Ben, not again! <laughs> Webster fell to a blinder. Edge and oh, what a catch! Leaving it to the bowlers to build the lead. Zagar bowls and Andrews lifts him over mid-off. The tail wagging, putting on 135 runs for the last three wickets. Jackson Bird, the unlikely destroyer, smashing 39 of just 19 balls. Bowls full and it's all oh, driven again by Jackson Bird. That is the best of the lot. But Bird and the cartel had no such success with the ball. Western Australia piling on the runs in response, leaving both sides with an uphill battle to salvage a result tomorrow. The Hobart Hurricanes have capitulated against the Melbourne Stars in Sydney. New Zealand import Rachel Priest was dismissed first ball as the Hurricanes slumped to four for 18. Oh, that might have come onto the stumps, it has. A fighting 26 not out from Nicola Carey helped inch the total to 89. 
Goes past the keeper, down to third man. But it was no match for an inform Elise Villani, who smashed a match ceiling 51 not out. Full toss again, she goes aerial. That's another six. That's her half century. 51 brought up. In the Lacquer Seljak Cup, Olympia has thrashed Launceston City. The Warriors scored three goals in four minutes on the way to a 7-0 victory. It was a pinpoint pass that helped Glenorchy break the two-all deadlock with South Hobart in the 70th minute. Only has the one-option ball. It's Young, takes it on the chest. Thomas Young has put it into the back of the net. South Hobart faced a similar fate in the Women's Statewide Cup, Olympia finding the back of the net six times, sending a warning to Clarence for next week's final. Garth Burley, 7 Tasmania News. Good evening everyone. 22 degrees in Launceston today and Hobart, Burnie and Devonport all reaching a top of 17. Around the state, ooze reaching 21, 19 in Strawn, 18 degrees in Low Head and Grove, and Flinders Island, St Helens and Friendly Beaches all 17. Cloud can be seen over eastern Tasmania today, extending across to the northwest, with clear skies in the west and parts of the north. Across Australia, active frontal bands are associ and associated lows are seen to the east of New South Wales, while extensive cloud can be seen over the southern ocean. Convective cloud extends over the east of the country. Tomorrow's chart shows the high to the southeast of Tasmania, extending a ridge over eastern and central Australia. A weak trough flies over the southern ocean. Northwest to northeasterly winds tomorrow, 5 to 15 knots, increasing about eastern and western waters to 10 to 20 knots. Partly cloudy and 23 in Hobart tomorrow, 22 in Dover, ooze reaching 25. 21 in Launceston, partly cloudy and 17 in Devonport, Scottsdale 19. Burnie 17 degrees tomorrow, 21 in Strawn, Stanley 18 and partly cloudy. And in the east, 20 degrees in St Helens, 22 and partly cloudy in Swansea and Ross a top of 21. The UV tomorrow is very high across the state. Looking onto Tuesday now, fine and quite hot in the south with northeast to northwesterly winds. Showers about the west on Wednesday with light showers elsewhere. And on Thursday, showers about the west and far south, fine elsewhere. 21 in Perth tomorrow, mostly sunny and 30 in Adelaide, Sydney 22 and sunny and 35 in Darwin. And currently Hobart 16 degrees and mostly cloudy, partly cloudy and 18 in Launceston and currently sunny and 16 in Devonport. And Lou, that's your weather tonight. Lovely, looks like summer's finally on its way. And that's all your news for this Sunday evening. Thanks for joining us. Have a lovely evening. Good night.